And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you today and welcome to our program, Sounds of Revival. Brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. It's a blessing to be here one more time because even when I'm speaking the word myself, I am blessed also. So it's going to be interesting to hear what the Lord has to say to us today. Now we do have a subject, but even though we do have the subject, God has to fill in what's going to be said. He Sometimes when he deals with us, he gives us just a few words, and then from that point on, we have to be very attentive to the Holy Spirit. That he will instruct us and guide us. Like the Bible says in the book of um, Psalm 32, verse number 8, it said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. So we're, I am anticipating for the Holy Spirit to guide me through this message and to give to us exactly what we need. Because you do know that this is not my word, this is his word. This is not something that I have conjured up or something that I have had a chance to just meditate on and, and think this is good for God's people. God knows what's good for you. God knows what's good for me. So again, now the topic for the world today is going to be um, word power equals faith power. Word power equals faith power. And sometimes if we're not careful, we will... Um, divide these two too far apart. But you cannot have word power without faith power, and you cannot have faith power without word power. Now we're going to um, go with John chapter 1, verse number 1. The Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And of course, that was Jesus Christ. But remember, the word of God and the um, faith of God are one, and that God and his Son are one. God and the word are one. I'm going to quote John chapter 1, verse, um, John chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3 again. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with the God. Glory to God. And therefore, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the begotten, or the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ himself was the word. And remember, God was the word. Now, Jesus also talked about how important that our faith is when it's connected to the word, because Jesus operated even by faith. Jesus himself was a faith person. Jesus could do nothing except his faith was in working order. This is why the Bible said in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 22, 23, and 24, Jesus speaking, he said, have faith in God. But if you look at that Mark 11, chapter 22, um, um, verse number 4, in the um, Greek, Mark 11, Mark 11, 22, it talks about that, that the faith is to have faith in God, but really it's to have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. All right, so Mark 11, 22, 23, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Note again, Mark 11, 22, have the faith of God. God operates by faith, but God is the word, and the word is God. 
Therefore, as I stated at the initial part of this um, sermon, that let us not be too um, hasty and let us not be remiss and let us not be um, faulty in actually dividing the word from faith and faith from the word. The two are inseparable. You cannot have the word without faith and you cannot have faith without the word because God is faith. He is a God of faith. So Mark 11, 22, 23, Jesus was telling us how faith operates. Faith has to operate the same way God operates his faith. Remember in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said, in the beginning, God created and God said, and God said, and God said, let there be light in the world light. God spoke it and it happened. And this is the same way Jesus himself, you know, that Mark 11, 22 and 23, that's um, in your Bible, if you read it, that's what they say, that's in red. Jesus' word are in red. So whenever you see the words of Jesus and know that Jesus himself, the master is speaking, we need to pay particular attention because something very profound, deep, and necessary and needed is being spoken to us. So let us not look over this lightly that, again, we are being admonished to have the faith of God because in times like these, we need to have God's faith operable in our life. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17, the Bible said this, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the only way faith comes. Of course, people have their own ideas and their own thoughts about where faith comes from, but there's only one way that faith comes from, it comes from a faith God. And faith God is a God of the word. The word of God and the God of the word are one. Glory to God. So again, we are seeking for a greater understanding of what real faith is, because you know that the Bible talks about the various kinds of faith. It talks about feigned faith, which is a pretended faith. It talks about um, small faith and little faith, glory to God, and faith that doesn't really amount to anything. So even even talks about devil faith in the book of James chapter 2, verse 20. It talks about devils even have faith. Remember it said that? It said, I believe thou that there is but one God, thou doest well. The devil believe also and tremble. So the devil got the wrong kind of faith because that faith is built on fear. And that faith, their faith is not really the God kind of faith. So what we're saying, I think we need to be more astute and more um, concerned about God teaching us what real faith is. God will have to teach us faith. How how did that happen? Well, the Bible said in the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 3, thy faith groweth exceedingly. Faith has to grow. Therefore, that also indicates to us that God has to teach us faith. God taught the disciples faith. He taught them how to use their faith. He really began to take them deeper into what real faith is. And if we're not careful, we could um, uh, accept faith substitute. The devil, everything real that God had, God has for us, the devil has a counterfeit. The devil has counterfeit faith. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you think you have faith and you think your faith is strong, the devil is tricking you because you know why he wants you to think you have strong faith? So when that faith test comes, you're going to fail the faith test because you thought you had enough faith in you. But the Bible says in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse number 3, it said, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. In other words, there is a, there is a faith that was the, once delivered unto the saints. It was the original faith that we had to contend for. You know that word contend, they use that in the um, fighting business sometimes. They said this is a number one contender. And people are contending for the title. That means they are putting on those gloves and they are fighting. Glory to God. And you know, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12, the Bible said this, fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. Let's go back to Jude chapter 1, verse 3. It says, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He was saying, so there are all kinds of faith that's going to be um, offered to you, but you have to contend for the real faith, the one that was once delivered to the saints, the one that God gave to us. The one that has not been watered down, it has not been intellectualized away. You know, one false kind of faith is what we call just giving mental assent to something. Just because you give mental assent to the Word of God, that doesn't mean you believe it. 
Word of God. People can say the Word of God is true, but yet when the tests come, they fail the faith test. They don't stand on the Word of God. They begin to cry. They begin to get anxious. They have nervous breaks down. They get um, shake, shaky and break out in the cold sweats. When it comes time to trust God, when they're facing the enemy, why? Because their faith has not been purified. Their faith has not um, grown up. As a matter of fact, on more than one occasion, the Bible addresses saints of God whose faith had not grown and they were in trouble with God. For example, Paul told the people in, in Corinthians, he said, the time that you need to be teaching others and the time that you need to be examples to others, he said, you need to be um, taking other people on the faith journey. He said, you have need that being taught again of the elementary things about faith. You have need that someone teach you. And bottom line, he said, what are you still doing in kindergarten? Why hasn't your faith grown? You should be graduating from college by now, but your faith is still in the, in, in the nursery. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, in the book of Hebrews, this was addressed also, this problem about our faith not really growing. You see, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible said this, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. All right, isn't that wonderful? By grace are you saved through faith. But the faith that um, keeps you saved has to grow. Yes, you were saved by faith, but remember going back again, um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, thy faith groweth exceedingly. And then let's go back to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it said this, Grow in grace. Remember, you're, you're saved by grace. You've been saved by grace, but you have to grow now. The ne your next job, your next assignment is to grow. We miss that, though. Sometimes we just basically have the same old testimony for uh, 40 and 50 years after we're saved, uh, saved by grace. Or we, we love the scripture found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, that says, By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God. What have you done with your faith? Just because grace and faith saved you, that means you were born, you were now a baby, okay? You came into this world a baby. Baby faith is where you reside at. When you're born again, you come out as a baby, and you have some growing to do. We fail to um, understand this. Our faith has to grow. Our faith has to be developed. We have to put our faith Glory to God, even to the test and examine ourselves. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. He said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. What does that mean? We know you were saved by faith and you start out by faith, but what have you done with that faith? Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 5. Paul said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Why should we do that? Because if you're not careful, your faith can actually be going backward instead of forward. If you're not careful, if you are so elated about the fact that you are, okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 again, elated and happy, by grace are you saved through faith. Thank the Lord I'm saved, and that's, that's wonderful. But remember, you are stewards of your faith. The next thing that you have to do, we have to develop our faith. We have to ask Almighty God to increase our faith. We have to ask God to teach us what real faith is, because remember, again, the devil got counterfeit faith. And actually, we, again, can fall into this trap of giving mental assent. And we think that's faith, just because you acknowledge it in your head. But you see, the Bible says faith without works is dead. And we have to, again, examine our faith. We have to ask God to help us to stay on the faith track and stay in the right standing with God concerning our faith because God does not appreciate weak, weak faith. As a matter of fact, God looked upon the children of Israel on one, one time and he had worked with them and worked with them and worked with them, delivered them, brought them out of the land of Egypt. He'd done a miracle for them, turned water into blood. He had divided the Red Sea. He had fought their battle for them. And when he, and then after years later, he looked at them, but they were still, every time a test came up, they were whining and crying. And instead of saying, Ken, 
instead of saying God can, they said can God. Every time a test would come up, can God. He, he has already manifested himself. Yes, he divided the Red Sea. He did so many things before them, but yet when the test came again, facing each test, they would start weeping and whining and accusing God of, God, you brought us out into the wilderness to kill us. All these accusations against God. Where was their faith? So God looked upon them and he shook his head and said, children of Israel, children in whom there is no faith. He said, you don't have a job of faith. Amen. I walked you through the Red Sea. I tried to teach you, but you didn't understand that you had to allow me, ask me to teach you faith. Glory to God, because your faith can die. Again, the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So how do we cultivate faith? Even the modern day church, we are weak in faith. And many times we're wondering why we don't get healed, why finances are not, are not there, why loved ones are not saved, why we are not where we are when temptation comes, the devil just beats us down. Why? Because faith is not there. Everything that is done in, in the Bible, glory to God, that's going to help you, is done by faith, your faith relationship with God. So let us not take faith lightly, but let us understand that God wants your faith to go somewhere. He doesn't want to just stay where it was 40 years ago when you um, were born again. First Corinthians chapter number um, 11, Paul talks about, um, I'm, yes, First Corinthians chapter 13, I'm sorry, verse 11. Paul, that's the um, love chapter. But Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 11. Listen to this. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But as I became a man, I put away childish things. Notice what he's saying here. When you're a child, okay, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. All right, I understood as a child, and I thought like a child. I had childish thought. No, again, but as, as I became a man, or actually said when I became a man, but we know that means as I became a man, man, all right? So when I became a man, as I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish thoughts. I put away childish understanding, and I put away childish actions. But if you know it, you have to grow. So... When you, you were born, but there's a process. As you grow, you put away childish things. But we're not careful. We will still have that childish faith that we had when we were first born again. Walking around in spiritual diapers. Amen. We need to grow up. Glory to God. And let God take us on the faith journey that he designed for us to go in. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verse number 8, a highway shall be there and a way. And it should be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but the redeemed shall walk there. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You've been called to higher ground. You are a new person. You know, and you know the, the new kind of person you are? You are a faith person. Glory to God. Remember, saved by faith, but guess what? You are kept saved by faith. That saving faith that you were born again with, that it must be, let me be redundant, it must be cultivated, it must grow. It's got to go somewhere, it's not to be stuck in that baby state, sitting, sitting around for the next 25 years in that baby, waiting in diapers. He's not coming back for babies in diapers. Amen. No, forget it. All right? Our faith needs to go somewhere, it needs to grow up. Hallelujah. And we need to ask God. To instruct us, Psalm 32, verse number 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. So let us be um, humble ourselves and say, God, all right, I started on this faith journey, but now going back to 2 Corinthians chapter um, 13, verse 5, the Paul tell the saints, he said, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Don't just take it for granted that just because... Um, you were born again, that now everything is okay with your faith. Oh, no, glory to God. As a matter of fact, um, the Bible, Jesus even talked to Peter. Peter thought that his faith was where it should be. Peter thought that he, his faith was just maximized. He thought that his faith had reached an apex. He thought that his faith was where it should be. But God, Jesus told him, and said, Peter, um, I prayed for you. By the way, he said, Peter, Satan had desired to have you that he might sift you like wheat. 
But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Know what Jesus told him. He said, Peter, Satan had desired to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. He desired to mess you up, boy. Hallelujah. But he said, I prayed for you. Now, but note what he prayed. He said, I prayed for you that your faith be or not. In other words, what's going to sustain you when Satan comes against you, throws everything at you but the kitchen sink, and he might throw that in just, just because he wants to. Well, he got throws everything he can at you, then you're going to stand because Satan desires to have you. But no, he said, what? so what do you need? Your faith needs to be strengthened. You need to make sure your faith is where it was. And guess what? At that particular time, Peter's faith was not what he thought it was because when Jesus was telling the disciples what he's going to have to go through and um, that, that his faith needs to be strengthened, and then um, basically that test and trial were coming, Peter was saying, well, Lord, I'll go with you anywhere. I even give my life for you. Well, so why are you telling me I need more faith? I don't need more faith. I'm in good shape. Glory to God. And you know what God told him? He said, Peter, he said, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny your faith. is going to just go out the window. And Peter, Peter stood up because he thought he had faith. And Peter said, no, Lord, no, I'll go with you even to death. He said, before this very day, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me. Peter didn't believe it. Peter did not believe that he needed to examine his faith. And he needed to let God take his faith somewhere that it needed to go. Let's look at the chart here for a moment. Glory to God. So your faith has to go somewhere in God. It just can't be stuck. So God is saying to all of us that he has places that he wants our faith to grow, but we have to be humble enough sometimes to ask God to increase our faith, ask God to strengthen our faith. That's one prayer that you have been authorized to pray in the Bible. We seldom pray it. God had to teach me how to do that also. He's asked me for more faith. Ask me to strengthen your faith. This is something you do periodically because it needs to be done. Otherwise, if your faith doesn't stand, you won't stand. If your faith doesn't endure, we won't endure. So here the Bible talks about when the glory of God comes into our life and um, the, blessing the blessing cloud of God and then how to handle the glory of God. When God comes into your life, that faith that he gives you, that grace that he gives you, next thing you have to do when the glory of God comes into you and the faith of God comes into your life, your faith needs some roots to it. Glory to God. It needs some strengthening of that foundation. The foundation needs to be strengthened. That's strengthened. That's why the Bible says, well, how do you strengthen your faith roots? How do you get more faith? All right, Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Also, in the book of uh, Psalm 1, the Bible talks about how faith and how our walk in God grows. All right. Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay. His delight is in what? The law of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, day and night. And he shall be like a tree, because he meditates, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You want prosperity, prosperous faith, and everything else? And then meditate. The most important thing there is you meditate in the Word of God, then you will be like a tree that cannot be moved. Do you know Christians can be moved? Christians can be shaken? Christians can be blown off their foundation? It happens all the time because they don't have faith roots. The Word of God is not deep in them. That's why Jesus said, Every tree which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. So we want to be rooted. How are you rooted? Read Psalm 1 for yourself. Glory to God. If you meditate in the Word of God day and night, you will be like that tree planted, has some roots in you, that you won't just be uh, lightly planted, but you will be deeply planted. Glory to God. Word power equals faith power. You need both of them. You cannot survive 
without faith power and word power. God bless. I want to offer you today a booklet or really a pamphlet that we have written for the year 2020. The new year is coming in. And the title of this little pamphlet is um, Seven Keys to Real Revival for 2020. And we know that today revival is supposed to come forth in the church, but yet Satan has a counterfeit for everything. Satan has counterfeit revivals. So the Holy Spirit put it on my heart to write for the year 20, 2020 um, seven keys to real revival. And these keys will really help you to help us stay on track. You know, when we first began to understand what real revival was, then we were able to adjust ourselves to getting the real thing from God. Real revival, of course, shows up in the book of Acts, where the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that there came a sound from heaven, and so on and so forth, and the power of God came in fire. So again, remember, Satan has a counterfeit for everything that God has. Now, with this um, pamphlet entitled Seven Keys to Real Revival, also there is another insert that we will send to you also entitled how to fuel your praise you must fuel your praise fire because the bible talks about in the book of revelation chapter number um, three that the people have become, become lukewarm revelation 3 15 so therefore we don't want our fire to become lukewarm but god also has a way of keeping our revival fire hot and burning like it should be so when you call or write in today for this free offer. We're going to send it to you free and postpaid, and this information on here will be vital to you because Proverbs 11 and 9, by, through knowledge shall it just be delivered. This book will really help you. Send for it today. God bless. Hello, this is Bishop Jackson here again with my lovely wife, Darisa. We would like to invite you to call our Dolly Word ministry line. This is not a prayer line, but it is a message for you, a three-minute pre-recorded word of inspiration and encouragement. And you may dial this number 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Simply call 317-436-1346. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 8 a.m. and 1030 a.m. Tuesday Bible class at 730 p.m. and Saturday morning Bible class and communion at 8 a.m. Prayer precedes all services. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.